Financial Management from Islamic Perspective, DPD 40093. Today, our topic to present is Company Financial Performance. The company we choose to present today is name of company Petronas Dagangan Berhad. Selamat sejahtera and hi, my name is Sakuntala Venugopal, my matrix number is 23DIB19F2066, I am from class DIB4B. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Fauzali Bisunaiman, my matrix number is 23DIB19F2058. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Farah Nabilah binti Zaini, my matrix number is 23DIB1NF2022 Liquidity Ratio A. Current Ratio Formula is Current Asset Divided by Current Liability 2018 1.67 2019 1.53 2020 1.68 Interpretation is 2020 is current ratio generally indicates a very strong and safe liquidity position. B. Quick ratio. Formula is current asset minus inventory divided by current liability. 2018 1.39, 2019 1.31, 2020 1.50. Interpretation is 2020 is ability to pay of short-term obligation without relying on the sale of investor. C. Total Asset Turnover Ratio Formula is Sales divided by Total Asset 2018 3.46 2019 3.23 2020 is 2.36 Interpretation is 2018 is indicates that the company using its assets efficiently to generate sales. D. Account Receivable Turnover Ratio Formula is Sales on Account divided by Account Receivable 2018 14.3 14 2019 21.6 2017.34 Interpretation is 2019 is better than its receivable into cash each year Activity Ratio A. Inventory Turnover Ratio Formula is Sales divided by inventory 2018 36.35, 2019 37.64, 2020 is 45.36. Interpretation 2020 was sold and replaced during the year. B. Average collection period ratio formula account receivable divided by sales times 360, 2018 25.18, 2019 16.66 2020 is 2077 interpretation is 2020 is indicates that the ability of the company is in issuing credits purchasing in timely manner c total asset turnover ratio formula sales divided by total assets 2018 3.46 2019 3.23 2020 2.36 Interpretation is 2018 is indicates that the company using its assets efficiently to generate sales. D. Account receivable turnover ratio formula sales on account divided by account receivable 2018 17.34 2019 21.6 2020 is 14.3 Interpretation 2019 is better than its receivable into cash each year. The leverage ratio are used to evaluate a company's debt. For debt ratio, total liabilities divide total assets, which is in 2018, the total figure is 0 0.36. In 2019, the total figure is 0 0.395. In 2020, the total figure is 0 0.3. So, in year 2020, it's better since it indicates that the company has more asset than its liability. Next, for debt equity ratio, the formula is total liabilities divided shareholders' equity, which is the figure in 2018 is 3.04, in 2019 is 3.6, and 2020 is 2.39. So, 2019 is better since it indicates that the company has more asset than its liability. 
then for interest coverage ratio the formula is EBIT divide interest expenses which is the figure in 2018 is 668.95 in 2019 is 80.79 and 2020 is 57.06 so 2018 is ability of a firm's operation to provide protection to the long-term creditor now I will touch about for profitability ratio for this company. The first is gross margin ratio. For the formula is net sales minus cost of sales and divide net sales. For year 2018, the total company gap is 0 0.09. For year 2019 is 0 0.10 and for year 2020 0 0.12. So for the interpretation is in 2020 company is making RM 0.12 for gross profit for every RN1 ringgit. The second is a profit margin. The formula is net income divided net sales. For year 2018, the company get 0 0.027. For year 2019 is 0 0.03 and year 2020 is 0 0.02. So for the interpretation is 2019 is better to earn net income from sales. The third is operating profit margin. The formula is operating profit divided net sales and times 100. For year 2018, the company get 3.73 percent. Year 2019 is 3.65 percent, and for year 2020 is 2.72 percent. So for the interpretation is 2018 is the better max after paying for variable cost of productions. Next, return on asset. For the formula calculation is net income divided total assets. For year 2018, the total return on asset is 9.48%. Year 2019 is 8.82%. And for year 2020 is 5.09%. So interpretation for this is 2018 is making RN 0.09 in every RN warning it generate assets. Next, return on equity. For formula for this calculation is net income divided total equity. For year 2018, return on equity for this company gap is 14.7%. For year 2019, it is 14.6%. And for year 2020, the company just gap 7.34%. So for the interpretation is 2018 is better for every RN warning of the shareholders is equity. It generates 0.14% for profit. And the last is earning per share. For the formula is net income divided total number share outstanding. For year 2018 company get 81.18%. For year 2019 is 8 one point eight percent and for year 2020 is 39.56 percent so for the interpretation is 20 2019 is better than it indicates that the shareholders are getting rm 10.18 for every share held in the company for ratio determining the intrinsic value of a stock the calculate for price earning which is the formula market per share divide earnings per share the total figure in 2018 is 0 0.51 2019 is 0 0.24 and 2020 is 0 0.25 interpretation in 2019 is better for investor a calculate for earning per share the formula net income divide share outstanding the total figure in 2018 is 39.56%, 2019 is 81.8% and 2020 is 81.18%. Interpretation in 2020 might indicate that has spent a lot of money on growth in the past year. Dividend payout ratio. Formula dividend per share divided by earning per share. 2018 96%, 2019 86%, 2020 is 96%. Interpretation 2019 can signal that a company is reinvesting in the bulk of its earning into expanding operation. Value. The formula is market price per share divided book value per share. So for the year 2018 is 2.99. 
for year 2019 is 3.63 and for year 2020 is 3.77 so for the interpretation is 2018 could mean the stock price is overvalued next i will continue for this question for the question is identify the types of share offered by the company so the types of offered by the company is ordinary stock for b question is how many shares does the company issue RM275,964,000 shares the company issues. C. List of the board directors, director who served during the financial year until the date of this report are Number 1. Dato Muhammad Arif bin Muhammad, Chairman Second, Azrul, Azrul bin Osman Rani, appointed on 1st January 2020 Third, Lim Bang Chun. Fourth, Dato Anru, Anwar bin Ahmad. Fifth, Nur Aini binti Ismail. Sixth, Shafi'i bin Samsudin. Seven, Alvin Michael Hui Tai Kiam. Eight, Nirmala Anam Perempuan Doresami. Nine, Tang Suo Hua. Appointed on 1st July 2020. Ten, Ahmad Adli bin Alias. Appointed on 25th August 2020, 11. Vimala Anna Prumpan V. R. Menon. Retired on 17th November 2020, 12. Dato Sri Sheikh Zainal Abidin bin Sheikh Muhammad Tahir. Retired on 10 June 2020. For question D, the answer is annual general meeting held is four times. And the last one, question E. The accounting period of the company is at 31st December 2020. That's all from me. Thank you.